Hello, I'm Molly Milligan and I'm an actress. I have been working professionally for over 20 years and that includes regional theater, film, television, and commercials. I have, uh, right now I reside in Dallas and I've had the, actually the most success of my career has been in Dallas, though I did live in Los Angeles for around six years um, early on in my career. Um, so what do I do? I um, typically, nowadays, we put ourselves on tape and that is something that I do myself and I submit it to my agent who um, will help kind of navigate the opportunities that I have with different producers and directors. I also, um, though I'm right now with our season that we're in, I haven't been doing much live performance, but uh, typically we'll go and audition if I find something that's interesting or someone has requested that I audition. Um, typically that's the way it goes. You audition and you get the role <laughs> and then you um, prepare for the role. So um, the things that I love about what I do include um, probably the biggest thing is I love people and I think that through acting and storytelling um, we get the opportunity to understand others. Um, early on in my career I was actually here in Dallas and I was watching um, a performance of A Raisin in the Sun at the Dallas Theater Center and it's um, story, 1950s, um, black family, and this woman sitting next to me was um, in her 80s, um, dripping in diamonds, white woman, and she was weeping. And it just hit me how powerful um, storytelling through acting can be. Um, and that is, that's, that's definitely the thing I love most about what I do. I also enjoy the pressure, uh, whether you're on stage or you've got an entire film crew around you and you have to hit a certain emotional um, climax that is uh, necessary for the character journey. I, I love that pressure. Um, skills, okay. One thing that I think is imperative is to be prepared. I was fortunate enough to have um, a full ride scholarship to get my MFA. And I can say that the three years of very focused attention on the craft of acting really prepared me for many of the opportunities that I have been blessed with. So. I cannot encourage you to um, invest in your craft any more than saying you have to invest in your craft. You have to. Um, the other thing I would say in developing skills um, would be to put yourself in other positions. So I have produced and directed, and though those um, roles are not necessarily my favorite. I am so glad that I have forced myself to um, play those roles because I have been able to um, increase my appreciation for the production as a whole. Um, I've done sound, I've done camera, I've done every, I've done craft service. I've done every possible role within film production specifically that you can do. And I believe that that has been something that has helped me as an actress. Um, so yeah, I think that it's an amazing profession. It's a hard, it's a hard profession. There's an enormous amount of rejection and that is, uh, never ends. Um, but it's well worth it um, if that is what you have in your heart that you want to do. Well, thank you. Hi, my name is Michael Andreas, 
and I am an actor. I have been a professional actor for about eight or nine years now. Um, recently went back and graduated from the University of Central Oklahoma. Got my degree in musical theater. I sing also. Um, I've been involved in several high profile projects since I graduated. Um, I was in a miniseries, a limited series on Netflix called When They See Us. It's about the Central Park Five. It was directed by Ava DuVernay. Wonderful project, very powerful, very, very touching on a lot of levels. Um, I was on Broadway, on a Broadway show called A Soldier's Play, which was nominated for seven Tonys, uh, won an Outer Circle uh, Award, won the Drama Desk Award, just great experience overall being a part of that company. And I also played the lead in an independent film called Finding Carlos. I played Dros, who was the main character's father. Uh, it was an Oklahoma independent film that uh, was centered around the holidays and it was just so much fun. Great dance, great story, great connection between me and the gentleman that played my son, Maximus White. A lot of fun. Um, when I think about the skills that you need to pursue a career in acting, really it comes down to just allowing. It comes down to the freedom to allow yourself to experience the life around you and then portray that life in a realistic way. Uh, it comes down to immersing yourself, being willing to immerse yourself in a story, in a character, in a narrative so that you can tell that story you know, the best and most realistic way that you can. I love acting. I love the ability to take audiences out of whatever's happening in the real world for just a little bit and uh, the ability to make people laugh, to make them cry, to make them cheer, to make them boo, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish with your piece. Um, I love that I get to just pretend and have fun and, you know, let people experience something other than real life just for a little while. My advice to anybody that's looking to pursue a career in acting is to just do it. I mean, I know that sounds very simplistic, but consistency is very key in this business. So you're never too old, you're never too young. Take classes early and often when you can. Take music and acting and piano and just anything that's gonna feed your creative side. And just don't ever stop. If it's really what you wanna do, don't let anybody stop you. And that's the best advice that I can give. Hi, I'm Kyle Roberts, the creative director here at Reckless Abandonment Pictures in OKC. And I'm here today to talk to you about directing. In the last several years, I've been fortunate enough to direct film and television projects for DreamWorks and Hasbro and Mattel and Lego and all kinds of companies. And it's been a privilege and honor to be entrusted by these major brands to tell their stories. Uh, we've also told a lot of our own independent feature length films and short films, uh, animated shorts, and I've directed all those as well. So I have some tips for you on directing. So listen up. Number one, the number one rule in directing or the main purpose is directing your actors getting the best performance out of the actors. And so the best tip I, can, I have for you there is to really truly spend bonding time with them before the production. So whether this is a commercial or a feature length film or a short film, if you can, and we live in kind of a weird world today, so whether that's you know Zoom calls or FaceTime, or you're actually able to get together, just really get to know each other. Let them experience who you are. You need to experience who they are, because that is going to go a long way in the communication and bond between you and the actors throughout the duration of the project. Tip number two, never ever take the easy way out. When you're directing a project, you're gonna have decisions one through a million <laughs> to make. And don't ever make a decision just because it's the easy, easy decision, the easy way. Always make it because it's best for the cast, for the crew, for the story, or for your target audience. And that leads to tip number three. Pick and choose projects that you are personally passionate about. This passion is gonna give you that motor to keep it going and is also intangible value, just like these all are, that is something that's gonna show in the final, final project. 
For example, that's why we get a lot of these big jobs for Lego and for Mattel and for Hasbro, because our crew is passionate about bringing these projects to life. We are excited about it. It's something that we geek out about and are passionate about, and that's something that shows in the final, final project. Another example I have of just what makes all of this worth it and why all this hard work is worth it is we're screening Post Human Project, which is our feature length teen superhero movie uh, in Orlando. And I saw this eight year old girl spinning around, shooting fire from her hands, because Gwen is a character in our film, she shoots fire from her hands. And she said, Daddy, that was the best movie ever. <laughs> uh, just seeing her, seeing her so full of joy and so into the experience that she just had is worth it and it's something that you can't can't even explain and i just want to take a second to thank the film and music office uh, for this opportunity that i have to share with you a little bit of my heart on directing i hope you enjoyed it hope you maybe got something from it <laughs> see you guys <laughs> that's something hi my name is jamie roman and i am a producer um, producers are in charge of overseeing the entire process of making a film or a TV show or a commercial. Uh, that can start as early as helping to find a script, helping to give notes to make that script better with a writer or a director. Um, it can involve securing financing so that that film has a budget uh, that it can move forward with and, and get made. Um, and then when you're in production, it, it involves hiring the right key people um, to help the director realize their vision, as well as making sure the production stays on time and on budget. Um, and then through the post-production process of editing it and making sure everybody has what they need in terms of money, time, resources, people. Um, what I love about the job is that you get to interact with all levels of, of the filmmaking process. Um, the best producers that I've seen and that I've worked with have really good relationships with crew members, with creatives, and are really good at getting the best out of people. So a lot of times it's being a really good team player, um, keeping a cool head, and delivering high quality work and helping other people deliver high quality work. Uh, which isn't to say that producers don't get to be creative sometimes um, or that they don't get to have a lot of fun and travel and do all of that stuff. Um, producers get to do all, all of that, but it's big responsibility and uh, a lot of times because you're in charge of so many people, because film sets can be so big, it's really important that film producers are empathetic and kind and generous as well as being firm in what they believe and, and being really knowledgeable about the entire financing process and filmmaking process. So if you're interested in being a producer, um, some of the best advice that I can give and some of the best advice that I've received uh, boils down to two things. Um, one is to get the most experience that you, as you can in the filmmaking process. Some of the best producers that I have ever worked with and know have experience working in film in some other level. Um, it gives you a really strong sense of how departments function, how they work, what makes good people good at their job. And the more well-rounded understanding you have of that process, the better producer I think you'll be. Um, and the second thing would be to Ask as many people who are producers for their advice as you can, learn as much as you can, really be a sponge, uh, watch a lot of films, get a sense of what you like, what kind of films you think need to be made, and then go make it happen. Hello everyone, my name is Laron Chapman and I'm very excited to be speaking with you all today. I am a freelance screenwriter and film director here in the state of Oklahoma. And if I had to describe my profession in the most simplest of terms, I would say that I am a storyteller who formats his stories to be experienced and visualized on a small or big screen. What I love most about my job is that it allows me to be um, my most authentic self. And I've often told people that if they haven't seen or read something of mine, then they haven't experienced me in my entirety because it's the one place that I am um, unfiltered and unafraid to say exactly what is on my mind in a way that can be consumed and digestible for a large audience. 
if there were three principles that I could impart with you all that are necessary to do well in this profession, it would be one, to have patience and perseverance because it's not gonna happen overnight. You're gonna be rejected every 10 times for before you get you know, an acceptance and you have to just understand that it's part of the process. And the second thing that I would say is that you have to have passion. You have to love what you're doing in order to pursue it and to continue and stick with it. And then discipline would be the third thing because I think that you have to have discipline in order to see a project through to the end. It's an arduous process. It's sometimes a painful process, but it's a necessary and rewarding process in the end. And if there were any advice that I could give to aspiring screenwriters like yourself, you have to create, create, create. You have to make a point to write something every day, whether it's a blog, a Facebook post, a journal entry, brainstorming for a new screenplay, whatever it is, you have to keep building on that creative muscle. Because like every, like the muscles in your body, you have to just keep building on it. And what happens over time is even when in the in-between, when you don't have a project or a gig set up for yourself, you have created a portfolio of work that shows that you are consistent and that you are going to build on this and hone in on your craft, whether given the opportunity or not, because it's something you love to do. I wish you all the best in your endeavors and Happy writing.